Okay, welcome Planning Commission members. I'll now call the October 5th Planning Commission work session in session. All right, so I guess we'll, um, first we'll just do a roll call. Mr. Cohn? Here. Mr. Hart? Here. Ms. Hartz? Ms. Hartz here. And looks like she's joined yet. Okay. Ms. James? Here. Dr. Mandel? Here. Mr. Stigemeyer? Here. Mr. Tupper. And Mr. Frost. Here. Okay. You have a quorum, and I think I'm just going to um, turn this over to um, Rachel and Krista to talk about the zoning map revisions and share their screens. All right. Let me get my screen shared here. All right, and if you're, um, if we have any members of the public following along, um, please feel free. If you have any questions during this, you can email COC board meeting at columbiasc.gov or you can call 803 545 3425 if you have specific questions so that we can patch you through and get those answered during this work session. All right, so I just wanted to update everyone on the status of the map. So as you know, we've had our ordinance adopted um, as revised in May of this year, and we had an effective date of November of 2020. Um, we are coming to you tonight to update that to March 31st of 2021. So with this, new zoning districts were created in the ordinance and so because of that, we needed to do a new map. Our public input meetings that we had all set to go in March did get canceled. So we held a virtual public meeting last week on the 29th. And we are in the middle of doing our virtual one-on-one -on -one meetings. We will be coming to you all with the full map in November. So that's why we're kind of giving you an update now and going over um, the mapping process, the new districts, and some frequently asked questions, as well as we're going to show you a tutorial on how to navigate those draft maps if you all wanted to take a look at them ahead of time. We'll be going to zoning public hearing in January. So again, this is just the process. So in September, we're having our, we start our virtual public meetings. This month, we're coming to you with the date change. And then November, we come to you with the map for your recommendation and then council beginning in January. December will be filled with us just doing notice and doing postings throughout the entire city. So with our effective date being March 31st of 2021. Good evening, everyone. Krista Hampton here, Director of Planning and Development Services. And those of you who have been with us um, on this journey from the beginning, um, I'm looking at you, Dale, and a few others, uh, have seen these themes um, previously. So of the entire ordinance itself, we have several key themes. Um, the first is to create a user-friendly code um, because our current one certainly uh, could use help in that area. So we want it to be easy to navigate, to find information. And so we have charts, we have pictures. That's a main theme. The second one is to implement Plan Columbia, which was uh, the future land use plan uh, prior to Compass. It was implemented into the Columbia Compass plan. And so its policies and guidance we wanted to put within the Unified Development Ordinance, including um, infill, which is number three, is to modernize the regulations to support strongly encourage and support infill and redevelopment within the city. We are largely a built out city um, unless we annex. And so most of our development is redevelopment in infill. And we want to make sure that we make that easy um, for the appropriate type of development. And finally, our theme is to support and encourage sustainable and green development practices um, through incentives for green development practices and other types of development regulations. 
Our new zoning districts are divided into four main categories. Residential, which Rachel will go over, will largely stay the same. We have some mixed use districts now, but one key component of this code is that we really emphasize mixed use along our corridors. And so we have a number of those. Uh, institutional and campus zoning districts, these are also new to reflect the fact that we are a government and institutional town to a large degree. And finally, we maintain our industrial zoning districts and add a new innovative district. So to um, support this very important category of development. All right, so I'll go over our residential districts with you all. We have the transitional conservation district and the large lot reserve district. Both of these are pretty similar in that these are often undeveloped or developed at a very low end density and maybe annexed in, or they might just be assigned this as a holdover. With the TC district, that transitional conservation district, they could either be rezoned or it will remain in conservation. So this could be wetlands or something along those lines. With the large lot reserve district, those will be rezoned at appropriate time. So once that land is kind of plucked out for development, that's when it will get rezoned to what is fitting for the proposed development in the area. Our single family districts, again, are staying pretty much the same. You have your large lot, your medium, and your small lot. Um, so they're the RSFs. So and again, this accommodates primarily single family detached dwellings at varying densities. So because we don't want anything that's gonna substantially interfere with those residential natures of the district. We have our two family districts. So there's the straight residential two family district and then we have the mill village district. So, and these areas accommodate single family and two family duplexes at moderate densities. Um, the mill village area, those are the smaller lots with the, um, they have the smaller lot area requirements for the duplexes. Our residential mixed districts are very similar to our current RG districts. And again, this provides a moderate density mix of residential single family, two family, townhouse, and small to medium scale multifamily dwellings. The important thing to remember about these RM districts, just like with the RG, for anything above a single family residential, it has to have the lot area, it has to meet the setbacks, it has to meet the lot coverage requirements, parking, all development standards come into play. So even though a use such as multifamily might be permitted in these districts, it doesn't mean that that's gonna work in every lot zoned RM. So that's been a question that's come up a lot. So I wanted to touch on that before we moved on. I'll turn it back over to Krista. Two new districts we have, the MU1 and MU2, are uh, intended to be adjacent to neighborhoods so that they help with that transition. They are low to medium density and also can include some of our residential uses. The next set of districts, and I'll um, put an overview of the, these. We're, we're going through this fairly quickly. Um, just so we can make sure we have time for questions. And that said, if planning commissioners want further information beyond this, those of you who have not been part of planning commission, uh, another primer on the code um, or zoning maps or any of this, we're, we're happy to help. Um, but the next four districts are um, activity centered in corridors. And what's terrific about this new code is that it brings into play context. Whereas before it used to be C3 was C3 no matter where you were, no matter the context, we now have districts that take context into effect and, and into account, pardon. And it, it ranges from neighborhood, which is really intended to be embedded or directly adjacent to neighborhoods and serve them to the community activity, which serves a larger area, um, still walkable, but you may get into your car and drive to another community activity. And regional, which as its name indicates is intended to draw from a region and may be more high intense, both commercial and residential. And finally, downtown, uh, which is our central business district and is intended to support all of those 
uses and intensities um, expected there. We have office and institutional district, which is very similar to our C1, which uh, is for, for doctors, offices, also some commercial and low level commercial and residential. Our general commercial district, which is somewhat analogous to our C3, we still have a lot of auto oriented corridors and that is their character and that is going to be their character. And this district is intended to continue to support that. And finally, we have a mixed commercial district, which is somewhat similar to our downtown activity center, but um, is aligned more with the InnaVista district, um, still allowing that, that mix of uses, but in different densities and a little bit of flexibility from some of the bulk requirements. All right, so next we have the institutional. So we have institutional general district and the um, Institutional University and Medical District. These will often go hand in hand. Um, the Institutional General District will often come first and then they will merge into that University and Medical District. Um, that includes larger sites, government offices. Um, the University Medical is large hospitals, large universities. Um, they will file an institutional development plan and have that approved and that's where they will transition from the general district to the university and medical district. So they get that plan in place for traffic, um, pedestrian, walking plans, um, continuity, parking, all of that will be included in that institutional development plan. We have our transportation utilities district. So railroad, airport, um, bus stations, as well as utility related services will fall under this area. And then we have our light industrial and heavy industrial. Um, those will stay pretty much in line with our current light industrial, the M1 and M2 districts. And then the new district is our employment campus district. Um, that is for some light industrial development, research and development, it has an expectation of that high quality design, often within a campus setting, um, some research and medical labs, some manufacturing, as well as some multifamily restaurant and retail will be encompassed in that district. In addition to our base zoning districts, we currently have a number of overlay zoning districts and those districts either supplement or modify the requirements of the base zoning district. So we are keeping all of our existing, well, except for a few, but our, the PD, which um, is fortunately going away, but those with which you're most familiar, those overlay districts, we are maintaining and they will be mapped in the existing locations. Those include our historic districts, which are currently called DP districts and now are a little bit more logical with HP, Historic Preservation, all of our city center design and five points in a vista, our design districts are staying the same. Community character as well and the outdoor advertising sign. We have a new overlay district that was a result of the West Gervais Street planning exercise that has a heightened setback requirement uh, in the Gervais and the UG Street area. We have one that will not be mapped, which is a gateway design overlay. It, and that provides us a tool as we do gateway planning to apply regulations that may come out of those areas. All right, so I'm gonna stop sharing my screen for one minute and bring up another one. Um, I'm gonna show you all just how to navigate that draft zoning map. All right, so we have our draft zoning map here. Let me, sorry, my little Zoom screen is blocking some of this. Um, so a couple of things to keep in mind when navigating. Newly annexed properties, really probably properties annexed within the last six to nine months are not on this proposed map, but we do have a list of those and we have given them proposed districts. So if you're going through here and you have specific annex properties that you have questions about, feel free to reach out to staff 
Same goes if you're going around and navigating and you see that a parcel has nothing on it. So it's just a blank parcel. That means that it is most likely split zone. Um, we were not able to map split zoned on this draft map. So we have separate PDFs in house. So if you have questions about a potential split zone property, we can send that information to you as well. So um, we have the layers list over here. Street and ownership, you can either turn that on or off. It just shows you if it's city or DOT. Zoning district and pictometry, you wanna make sure both of those are on. You can have the proposed zoning district or the current. I suggest you have both on. So, and I will give you all an example here. I'll just look up our city offices, so 1136 Washington Street. Takes you there, so it shows you D5, which is the current zoning, as well as the DAC, which is the Downtown Activity Center Corridor, that is the proposed zoning. If you click on it, you can toggle back and forth between so you see the current and the proposed. If you click on the proposed district, it'll open a separate PDF for you that has the summary of the proposed zoning district. So it has the purpose of the district as well as intensity and dimensional standards. And it gives you an example of those dimensional standards here as well as code sections that are applicable. You can also click and leave a comment. So if you're going through there and you have a question, you can submit it through us to us through this portal or you can just email it to us either way. So I will also drive along here to show you some of our residential areas so that you can see how those are laid out. I have the spinning circle of death. There we go. So you can see over here, we definitely try to keep residential as close to what it was now. So if it was single family before, it is most likely single family now. Same with if it was RG before, it is most likely RM now. So you can see the division here. We also cleaned up the single family districts based on the sizing of the lots um, to make sure that they fit into the large lot, medium or small lot. Okay, but just to give you all that rundown and as you're navigating through there if you have questions please don't hesitate to reach out to us we also have the email address zoning map at columbia sc.gov which is specific for our draft zoning map question So we also are going through our one-on-one -on -one meetings. We have a couple of days left of those on the 7th and the 8th. We had a few on the 30th, 1st and 2nd, where people are able to set appointments either via job form or giving us a call to have 15, 20 minute sessions with us to talk about their specific properties. So and you all are welcome to do that too. You can sign up via the weplantogether.org site. Right. We wanted to we wanted to make sure that people had an opportunity to ask about specific pro properties, which when you're in a large meeting is not always the most effective way to do that. So that's why we've had these. And if we get people who are asking questions further down the line, we'll we'll go ahead and set up some additional dates for those as well. Do you all have any questions for us? I have a, a quick question. So I, I think it's awesome that y'all are doing the one-on-ones. How, how many of those have, have you done and how's the feedback been in those meetings? What's kind of the tone of it, et cetera? Have we done about six or seven, Krista? Yeah, I would say so. Sure, and um, they've been good. I mean, sometimes people are more wanting to talk about the adopted text itself 
Um, but we're happy to answer those questions too and how it ties into the proposed districts for properties. Um, but people have had very good questions. I think they've walked away with more information and we were able to answer those questions for them and make them feel a little bit more comfortable with everything. Because some people just get nervous with change. You know? Yeah, I was just gonna ask you, are you getting, has anybody tried to, my word, negotiate with the city on, on what their new classification is or has it not just been the case? I, I haven't had any of that yet. So, I mean, people we definitely have some... ideas. So, Krista, go right. ahead, sorry. A couple who, yeah, who had some, some good ideas about a couple areas that, that we agree should be changed more than likely. So what we do is we're taking those recommendations and then we're meeting as a staff to discuss them and, and weigh them. Um, but generally it's not uh, a, a, an individual property that would give someone more rights necessarily. It's really something that would be more compatible. So I think it's been very positive thus far. Good, no, that's great. Um, and I do wanna emphasize in, in whatever form uh, is necessary for the, for the planning commissioners to feel comfortable, we are bringing this map to you in November for your recommendation to city council to go forward for a public hearing in, in January. So between now and then, if you have any questions, any information you need to help you make that decision, please let us know. Um, I, I don't think I heard you say this in the presentation, but it just I just went on the We Plan Together website. Um, Where's Richland County where, because I know we for a long time were running parallel with them. Are they doing the same effort on the county side or is it just only the city? They are, but uh, they are currently at the end of the code process, if I'm not mistaken. So okay. they're a little bit behind us. Okay. But they are, um, they're working on their public input for that and then they'll be going through the mapping and and i thank you for bringing it up dale for those of you who aren't aware you know we did start this off and that's why we have the weplantogether.org website because it has both the county and the city's processes and information and it was the same consultant and so why while the code is not identical uh, you know it, it speaks to one another so that's a, a great positive of this project If there's anybody from the public who wanted to speak or to um, submit an email comment, uh, you can do so at uh, cocboardmeeting at columbiasc.gov, or you can call 803-545-3425 while the planning commissioners are still considering this. Krista could, you, Krista, could you repeat that phone number for the citizens that might have questions where they could call into? Sure. And that it's just for this meeting right now. It's not for the, um, we, it's 803-545-3425. Okay. Thank you. And that's for property owners that might have questions regarding the um you know the, the the plan itself not specific to the meeting correct to the code itself yes yes you can certainly call that as well also the rachel you'll uh, the main zoning line is 803-545-3333 which may be a better number because that one is staffed during the day the entire time so the, the five four five three four two five was intended for for this this time 
Oh, okay. I got you. Yeah, we didn't we didn't have a public input number created specific for this work session. So we're just giving that out if people had questions specific to the work session. But yes, if they have questions about the map, they're welcome to call us at 545-3333 during um, business hours and we will happily assist. They can also email zoningmap at columbiasc.gov. Yeah, we've, we've received quite a few comments and questions on the zoning map email. So that's, that's also a good one that goes to a number of us and staff has been really good about responding to those. And, and Crystal, while we're waiting, I've just got something that I'm curious about more than anything. Of course, I think everybody's probably on this map looking at it right now. Has there always been a PUD in the center of Rosewood? Well, at the intersection of Huron and uh, looks like Holly. And then that is no, not RS2 that's going, or it's, it's going to like a residential mix from that. It's kind of a r random question, but it just really caught my eye. I've never seen that before. One thing you'll find, Dale, is that there were many, many PUDs, very small ones all over the city. Hmm. And I mean, we've had, we have single lot residential parcels that are, um, that were zoned PUD. And as we've discussed over the years, those do not meet the requirements of the statute. Right. So we are looking to make, take them into a classification that is most analogous to the use and compatible to the adjacent uses. Yeah, you can see it right there. That's very odd to me. I'm sure there was a good reason at some point, but now it's being uh, reclassified to residential mixed use or mixed. Yes, I mean, some of the logic behind a lot of those HUDs was something as simple as they just wanted to set their own setbacks. It was huh. little things like that, and they would become a PUD. It's fascinating. Well, I haven't seen any emails come in. I guess the phone's not ringing either, but. Well, planning commissioners, do y'all have anything else to? Huh? I don't have any questions. I, I appreciate the presentation. It's always helpful to get the update. Thank you. Yep, thank you. You all have been terrific during this process. It's been a long time coming. We're, we're really excited about it. Um, so if, again, don't hesitate between now and um, November, if, if anything comes up to just give, give us a call. Rachel, anything else from you? No, just thank you all. So, and yeah, as Krista said, please feel free to reach out. I'm always happy to answer questions. Okay, thank you. Thank you all. Um, if, if we don't have any further, uh, uh, or if we don't have any emails and no phone calls, uh, I'll, I'll take a motion to adjourn. Mr. Chairman, I would like to make a motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor, say aye. 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 All right, the meeting's adjourned. Thank you. Thank you, guys.